What is a continuing care retirement community, CCRC? Well, luckily for us, you and me, Brad Breeding is in the studio with me here. Brad, welcome. Thank you, glad to be here. Glad you're here. So Brad is a certified financial planner since 2006, has worked as an advisor, and also wrote the book, author of What's the Deal with Retirement Communities? And that's what we're gonna talk about. So we need to know what the deal is. So <laughs> thanks for being here. Sure. Um, I know you've also done a lot of work in helping people figure out how to evaluate and select the right retirement community for their situation with My Life Site, which is uh, the website that you co-founded and you're the president of the company. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Right. Well, welcome, and we're gonna take advantage of your knowledge right now, Brad. I wanna dive in because I appreciate you coming and visiting with us from North Carolina and spending some time with us here in the studio in Daytona Beach. So let's, let's really get to the heart of this. I know that you spent a lot of time focused on continuing care retirement communities. And mm -hmm. besides that being a mouthful, for a lot of people, it's really a foreign concept unless they've had a personal experience with it. So, and I won't kid you, I know some, but not a lot about them. So you can help us understand how they work. Uh, there's a, I got a list of questions for you. Sure. How they work, uh, are they regulated? Are they, are they rated? Are they profit, not for profit? Or who owns them? How do you pick them? All that. Sure. Okay. Let's in a short in. time. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to start with? Uh, start with uh, uh, w what are they in their basic form? Okay. So a continuing care retirement community is really one option for a long-term care plan. Um, the way it works is a CCRC, a little shorter than saying the full word. Right. Um, some people call them life plan communities. Uh, but a CCRC really is designed for somebody who lives independently today. Maybe they're still very active, um, you know, very healthy and all of these things, but they want to be somewhere that in the future, if their needs change, whether it's suddenly or gradually, okay. uh, they want to be somewhere that they know the care that they're going to need is going to be available to them right there on site, usually that's the case. And so what that does, it gives people peace of mind uh, for them to know that they're not going to be a burden to their family, mm. their adult children, uh, it's often viewed as a gift to the children because we've done our planning okay. and you kids don't have to worry as much and that kind of thing. So, mm. but you know, so you move in while you're independent. As your needs progress, they have those services available on site. Um, and, and there's a cost for that. But that's general, conceptually, that's how a CCRC okay. works. Okay, so you start out it, it, theoretically or in practicalities, you start mm -hmm. out with a lower level of care perhaps, or actually you start out just living there almost like it's an apartment, right? Or that's right. like a townhouse. Right, so a lot of them are apartment style. Some have villas or townhouses okay. actually available. Some have freestanding homes. Um, you know, so there's all kinds of, there's a variety of choices that are out there, but that's exactly right. So. Uh, you know, whether you want to be in a kind of a smaller apartment or still have your own home, those options it's are It's all available. part of one community. That's right. Generally. Generally okay, speaking. So that. once you can't, so, so once you are, you've bought into this, this, this life care plan mm -hmm. and you're in that, that home, um, you need help of some sort at some point, mm -hmm. then the people are, are employees of the facility mm -hmm. and they can come in and take care of you and help you and mm -hmm. give you what you need in that setting. And then when that doesn't work, you can go to the next. That's right. The thing that makes a CCRC unique from any of the other retirement communities that are out there is the fact that there's a contract actually between that resident and the community that mm -hmm. basically says, you know, we're making this commitment to you. Okay. Um, so first you have that, kind of that commitment um, to provide that, that housing and health care for essentially for lifetime. Mm. Um, and then CCRCs generally have that highest level of care. So there's some retirement communities out there that are not CCRCs that may offer some care. Maybe it's supportive services where they'll come into your apartment and help you a little bit on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Some may actually have a licensed assisted living um, facility on site, okay. but they're still not a CCRC because they don't have that higher level of care. So okay. that's kind of what's unique about CCRCs. Is they kind of span that full spectrum usually. Again, I always say usually because there are usually. variations. But well, because they, they are different and they're not right. all created equal. Exactly. They're not all created equal. And that's part of why, of course, you, you built the, uh, mm -hmm. the website uh, to be able to help people evaluate and select. So mm -hmm. um, are they regulated? Yes and no. Depends on the state. So uh, they are not regulated at the federal level, they're okay. regulated at the state level. So uh, in the 38 or 40 so states that have CCRCs, 
Um, most regulate them. Um, some do not. Okay. And uh, there's really been no research showing whether CCRCs perform better in states that are regulated or not regulated. Uh, or I should say there's, there's no, no research showing that there is a difference at all okay. between the two. But nonetheless, um, you know, uh, depending on the state, whatever that state level entity, usually the Department of Insurance, sometimes okay. it's other departments that okay. will regulate them. And Do they get a rating, like a hotel? They don't get a rating. Uh, no, there are some independent... I want to say in a five-star. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's some independent websites out there that, that offer those kind of things, reviews okay. and ratings and so okay. forth. But um, what's important to understand, I think, from a regulatory standpoint, is that the assisted living and the skilled care facilities that are within a CCRC, those are licensed just uh, like any other. Okay. Assist okay. They're licensed separately uh, for that type of care. But okay. when we talk about regulation of a CCRC, it's really looking more at the overall operation, independent living, and a lot of times really the financial aspects. Okay. You know, is that community uh, managing their money in a, in a prudent manner that they're going to be able to meet Because they've got to have reserves to honor the commitments they're making to people because this contract is for life. That's, that's Most right. Most of the time. That's right. And so some states are going to regulate that a little more closely than others. Mm -hmm. So the consumer still has to do their due diligence. So they, in doing that due diligence, there is a, you know, an evaluation you do of the, the different types of facilities and their contracts. So for the, for the audience, um, Brad, what do you see as some of the big surprises people you know, have when it starts time to look at the contract and the facility? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, the first one I would say comes to mind is um, the cost. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, well, mean, that's good. Be some, honest. Yeah, some CCRCs, uh, frankly, can be rather pricey. All right, give us a ballpark. So to get in, let's say just kind of the, quote, unquote, the average, and I know mm -hmm. that's a little hard. What are we looking at to get in? Does it matter how old we are at the time and how healthy we are? H how does it work? No, it's really not based on age and health. They do look at your health because you have to uh, be somewhat healthy before they'll allow you to enter into a CCRC contract. Okay. Um, but the pricing and so forth is not really based on your health like it would be perhaps with um, some other forms of insurance and okay. so forth. Um, but so to answer your question, an average, uh, you know, looking at the lower end, if you're talking just a one bedroom studio, kind of the smallest, you can probably find on average somewhere in the hundred, dollars $150,000 in terms of an entry fee. Okay. And then probably two to 3,000 a month. Okay, um, okay. If you look at something more like a two bedroom, Double occupancy, two bedroom apartment, or something along those lines, probably more in the two to three hundred thousand range on okay. average. Um, monthly rates probably more around four thousand or so. But once you've done that, then they are the CCRC is agreeing for that money to take care of you. That's right. That's the okay. commitment they're making to you. Okay. Yes. And now you know there have been CCRCs that have been in financial trouble and have not been able to fully So not all, there's, not all CCRCs are created equal. That's right. Now, yeah. it's been a very small percentage uh, of the overall number of communities that are out there, but it, mm. but it certainly has happened and continues to happen. So uh, you just need to be aware of that. Make sure you're looking at providers that uh, have a really solid track record, strong management team. Uh, they'll make their audited financial statements available to okay. you and some other questions that people really need to, to ask. That's good. So. The, the decision about a CCRC and thinking about these costs that we're talking about, you know, you're not talking about, you know, a, a hotel room rate. You're talking about a significant commitment up front mm -hmm. and then an ongoing fee every month to compare that to other options that may be available to the, the, the particular person, be it buying a long-term care insurance policy, self-pay, all these other options mm -hmm. that they might have. So that's where people really need to evaluate. And I know this is a, a thing that you really advocate, Brad, is that, uh, people plan ahead and think about these things well in advance. Right. Yeah, so the CCRC, obviously that helps to have a plan in place. We talked about a minute ago. Um, I think another piece of it, though, that's really important to think about is the lifestyle that's available to you there. And, and everybody's different, so there's no one single choice that's going to be right for everybody. Okay. Um, but for those who do think a CCRC may be an appropriate choice, one of the things to really consider is the lifestyle because there's really a big focus on wellness, on staying socially engaged. A lot of communities do a great job of getting residents uh, involved in projects that are outside of the community. And a lot okay. of these are resident-driven right. activities. So, you know, some communities are much more, um, you know, have a lot more energy maybe than some of the other ones where residents really take hold and say, we're going to kind of make this community our own. And they get out and get involved with all kinds of things. And it's just a really good environment because we know that as people age, that social interaction, sure. that engagement, that stimulation, 
really has an impact on health. Yeah, and the thing that's interesting as you described that, Brad, is that the, these communities, these CCRC companies, have an interest in your staying healthy. You know, they want you to stay healthy for two reasons. One, you're not costing more money mm -hmm. for requiring a higher level of care. And guess what? You're alive longer to pay your fees. So that's kind of nice that they have an incentive. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it sounds funny, but it, it is kind of good. And, and now that brings me to another great question I wanted to get to, and that is, who owns them? Are they corporations? Are they, you know, these, uh, you know, uh, anonymous organizations? Or is this something where they're privately held? Or you mentioned audited financials. Right. Well, about 80% are going to be nonprofit. Okay. Uh, probably 15, 20 years ago, that's probably more like 95%. So you had more and more for profit providers coming into the marketplace. Um, but still, the vast majority are, are not for profit providers. Some of them are freestanding. Okay. Uh, just, uh, you know, single location sort of places. And then others are owned by a larger nonprofit that may have five or six communities in a region or in different parts of the country. Okay, so you, so there's there's kind of a change there, and I imagine that the fact that you have for-profit companies coming in is not, you know, a, an accident. It's because they're seeing the aging of the baby boomers and the generation behind them, and they're seeing all these people retiring, knowing that they will be hitting 70, 75, 80, and the mm -hmm. chances of their needing care is greater, so they're saying, hey, we've got a solution that may make sense for you. Uh, well, that's exactly right. They see that need coming, and I think also just there's been more favorable financing options in the past. Over the past five, ten years ago with the interest rate environment, this made it a little more of a, mm. a viable choice for some of the for-profit providers to get into. For them to, the, with lower rates, to be able to build these facilities right. out. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. So there's, and there's accountability, I get that. That's important for people to be able to evaluate and select. Mm -hmm. So with this whole process, one of the big questions that people are going to have, Brad, is when you talk about laying out what could be, you know, 100, 150 or on up to 250, $300,000, that's a lot of money. The natural question is, well, do I ever get any of that back or does my family get any of that back? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, many communities provide refundable entry fees. So uh, a lot of times they'll provide a choice. So they'll have, you know, entry fee number one, which they typically call their traditional contract, is okay. refundable if you're there for a few, let's say if you move out or heaven forbid if death were to occur the first couple of years, okay. you would get some of that back. It's kind of on a declining scale. And if you're there more than two, three, four years, whatever the contract says, there's, there's no refund of that remaining. Okay. So at least you have those early years of knowing, if you, hey, if you don't like it, you move out, you get most of your money right. back type of thing. Others are refundable for as long as you're there. It may be 50% refundable, maybe 90% refundable. Some have even been fully refundable. Mm. But the trade-off is that to get a refundable contract, you have to pay more. The, the entry fee is higher. You mean there's no free lunch? There's Come no on. free lunch. Come on. <laughs> there's always, there's, I always tell people there's 100 cents in every dollar. There's 100 pennies in every dollar, so something's got to give. Something's got to give. That's right. That That's makes right. sense. So, you know, from a planning perspective, you've got that whole thing. Of, well, does it make sense to pay that extra amount? to get some of this back, and that's when you start thinking about time frame, time value of money. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. and then people kind of decide what makes the most sense for them. Well, when you and I are, uh, did a previous program, we talked about the cost of long-term care in general, and especially when you have people, uh, families stepping in and, and providing care, and the, the you'd referenced a study where there was like $300,000 of lost or not earned wages in Social mm -hmm. Security and all that for the family caregiver. So. Simple, simple comparison here, that's $300,000, and if somebody has, though, the financial resources to where they could go into a continuing care retirement community for less than that, th and, and not only save the money that the person would have lost, but also not put it on them, you're exactly right. This is a big gift to the family to have this in place so that people don't have to worry about it. Yeah, and, and I think more and more people want to provide that gift. I, you know, in the conversations that I have, kind of what I see out there is, generally speaking, people don't want their children, their adult children, to have to care for them. Now, I'm not sure it's always been that way. Mm -hmm. um, in a different time when families kind of lived together, sure, um, it, it was different. But today, you know, you just, you have families that are located all over diff different parts of the country, different parts mm -hmm. of the world. And I think most people, they want to see their kids continue to be able to thrive and right. have time with their own children and they don't want to burden them with That's that. True. Even though they know those kids would take that on if they needed to, yeah. uh, I think most people want to plan independently. That's one of the changes I'm starting to see. So maybe it's a part of the shift is not only just the 
the focus on it because of the demographic shift and more people retiring and baby boomers and all that, but also just the reality that, and I read this statistic the other day, that the average distance between family members in the United States is 1,200 miles. Mm -hmm. So yeah. to be able to have that care and not put that on the family, and also I think the concern for running out of money. You say, well, mm -hmm. I've got this money now. I know I can do this, be it either the continuing care retirement community or maybe getting the insurance to take care of it. Mm -hmm. So, well, we're lucky to have you come in and talk with us, Brad, because this is a complicated subject, and I applaud the work you're doing because you're helping people evaluate and then select, you know, the right particular facility or arrangement for them. So it's good stuff, good yeah. stuff. Thank you. I'm All glad right. to be here and help. All right. Well, keep at it, and, and for our listeners and viewers, they just need to focus on this and make sure this is part of their financial plan and discussion with the family and with their financial people and financial advisors. So, very good. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. Pleasure. If you would like more information about the topics and our guests featured in this series, please visit our website at planstrongertv.com. Also, if you have a question you would like David to answer, please send it to questions at planstrongertv.com. Mm -hmm.